Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, Reiki master, empowerment coach, and angel therapy practitioner. And I'm here today to talk about the upcoming Mercury retrograde um, from September 9th to October 2nd, 2022. It is the second to the last Mercury retrograde of this year. Usually we experience anywhere from three to four retrogrades. This one I think is particularly important because it is making aspects to Pluto, the planet of transformation, and Jupiter, the planet of our personal beliefs and of expansion and of wealth. So let me just go quickly and um, talk about some of the how this video works. It is based on whole sign Western astrology, and you're going to want to look at your rising sign. This is where I'm going to see the placement of where this Mercury retrograde is happening within the natal chart. So um, if you don't know your rising sign, there are plenty of free birth calculators on the internet. You will need obviously your date of birth, your location of birth, and the exact time of your birth to be the most accurate. So let's jump right in and talk a little bit about some of the aspects of what's happening with this Mercury retrograde. And I want to start with what's an aspect that's happening tomorrow. Even though the Mercury retrograde has not technically started, we are in what they call the storm or shadow period. It's where the planet appears to be slowing down and stationing, meaning it's going to appear to stop in the sky before it makes its retrograde motion. Now, no planet actually goes backwards. This is an illusion, but at the same time, it is something that... Um, directly affects our everyday lives, especially with the planet Mercury that rules our everyday lives. So tomorrow, um, September 2nd, 2022, Mercury moving forward is at six degrees Libra, and it will be making an exact opposition to Jupiter in uh, retrograde in Aries at six degrees. Mercury being in the sign of Libra is focusing in on the idea of partnership and cooperation and creating harmony and working um, in a sense of win-win is the way I want to put it. Uh, Libra very much requires balance. Uh, Libra tends to um, avoid confrontation. So sometimes on the shadow side, Libra can be a little passive aggressive in trying to hint around at what it wants without coming out and directly saying this. So I think what's going on with this idea of, of Jupiter in the sign of self, Aries, in the sign that rules um, brave action, going your own way, going alone, um, Aries can be considered the warrior, but here with Jupiter, I'm, I'm looking at this from a more expansive viewpoint, as if Jupiter retrograde is giving me an opportunity to revisit what I believe about myself, my ability to take action, my ability to create what I want. And when I see it in a direct opposition to Mercury, it makes me feel like I am fighting between what I want for myself and what I believe other people want for me or how other people will respond to my um, potential actions. This, this to me is sort of a theme going on. We're going to look at, as we go through the signs, we're going to look at the houses, which will be the environment of this uh, retrograde for you. It will be the landscape with which you will be walking through. It will be the dynamics with which you will be reviewing and assessing if they are still viable to the dynamic that you want to experience moving forward, what you want to co-create, or whether there are some things that you're wanting to sort of um, maybe either let go for a while or put on the back burner or abandon altogether because they're no longer aligned to what you want to experience. So I think that this idea of Jupiter rep representing expansion, foreign thoughts, foreign people, um, it represents higher education. It represents the Supreme Court and big concepts, the broad picture of things. And Mercury actually represents detail. It represents um, 
everyday activities. It represents a little bit of the monkey mind. Jupiter rules Sagittarius, Mercury rules Gemini. They are naturally opposing each other on the zodiac wheel. So here we're going to see these things sort of um, play themselves out, but in the dynamic of how do I feel about what I want for myself and how will this play out in the partnerships I have with my intimate partners and my professional partners and how others will respond to me. Again, this is tomorrow, um, September 2nd, where we're in the shadow period. So this is sort of teeing up the dynamics for the retrograde. It is not actually the retrograde yet. The retrograde starts on the 9th, and there we will see Mercury retrograding starting at 8 degrees Libra. And I see this degree as very transformational because the 8th degree represents the 8th house of Scorpio. And this is where we're going to see the opposition between um, Mercury and Jupiter loosening up a little bit. It's going to be sort of the opposition is going to be kind of going back and forth throughout the whole retrograde. So we'll see it uh, tightening. And then we'll see it loosening up. And to me, this is an opportunity to step forward into where my mind is sort of in a loop, in a hamster wheel of what my everyday activities expect of me and where um, I'm allowing myself to step above that situation and start to plan and co-create my life from a broader perspective and from almost foreign ideas that I wouldn't give life to um, in previous chapters of my perspective personal uh, life experience. So uh, we see the retrograde start with Jupiter retrograde at five degrees Aries. And by the 18th of September, we will see them back together in an exact opposition at four degrees. Um, so Jupiter will be at four degrees retrograde in Aries. Mercury now is retrograde Libra. So this is the first time they're having their op their exact opposition with Mercury being retrograde. So this is really an opportunity to revisit the ideas of how do I, what do I think about myself? What do I speak of when I'm talking about my own personal dynamics and what I want for myself? Because to me, Libra, require, Libra requires balance. And in order to have true balance, there is a... a seesaw or effect of being aware of how much I'm giving to others and what I'm giving to myself. And now when we're in the retrograde period and we're seeing it the fourth degree, we're seeing this at the Cancerian degree, the degree of nurturing, the degree of, of self-nurturing and the deepest thoughts of what I believe in myself. Um, then we get to the 22nd and 23rd and we're going to see the sun moving zero degrees into Libra, having an exact com an exact uh, meeting with, with Mercury retrograde at zero degrees Libra. This is going to be a, a one day, about one to, to two day influence as it'll start when it's around 29 degrees Libra before, I'm sorry, it'll be retrograding at 29 degrees um leap uh, 29 degrees Libra before it's going like into that zero degree Libra before it's heading back into I'm sorry I said that wrong it's the 29 zero degree Virgo Libra access so this is going to give us a real um, sort of an illumination the sun in Libra wants to open things up and I think this is a bright day even though Mercury's in retrograde it feels like an empowering day as we're giving an opportunity to have a new perception. The zero degree to me is an opportunity to infuse a, a fresh dynamic into something. It's, it feels like a beginning um, that offers me an opportunity to have a more magical viewpoint of things, maybe in some ways, even a more childlike innocence. I, I feel like the zero degree doesn't have as much jaded energy on it where I've experienced hard times. So I think this is a very powerful period. We are going to go into on the 26th, Mercury retrograde will now be 26 degrees Virgo, making an exact conjunction to Venus 
at 26 degrees Virgo, and at the same time, making a trine to Pluto retrograde at 26 degrees Capricorn. So this is a lot of earth energy. This has to do with how I think and Venus representing my self-worth. Capricorn representing structure in my life and really giving myself an opportunity to look at, am I operating on a dynamic that serves the greater picture of what I want for myself? These, uh, there, we have um, slow moving planets that are really mixing things up for the first time in, in hundreds of years. Some of the planets, it's thousands of years. I mean, there's this, this, we're coming into the age of Aquarius. So we're seeing a real tearing down Pluto of old structures that will no longer serve where mankind is going and the awareness of their co-creation. We are vibrationally becoming um, aware of our frequency. And as we're aware of our frequency, we are coming to realize that, that we are here not to learn lessons, but to practice the magic of our co-creation, to align our thoughts, our speaking, our, our writing, our teaching, what we teach others through our speech, how we absorb ourselves in the media. We're here to align those things into the dynamic of those um, more magical vibrations of fabulous relationships and fulfilling work. And this is what we're seeing in the Libra Virgo um, houses. So this is very much on, on the um, forefront of this retrograde. And when we add all the other dynamics going on, we're really seeing an opportunity to individualize through this Mercury retrograde, our co-creation and participation in how our life is rolling. Because Pluto is going to offer us a, a rebirth. And it's not an easy energy. It is an energy that is intense. It is an energy that takes no prisoners, uh, a little relentless in its ability to dig deep. And Venus is here in Virgo, really looking at herself and saying, what have I enslaved myself to? What dynamics have I entrapped my mind into and my everyday activities that will not allow me to evolve my self-worth and to pursue the things that I want? Because while these energies will be, I think they'll be magnified and, and normally a trine is very uh, harmonious. Rachel Manson. Dang. I thought I put my phone on, on do not disturb. I apologize for that. Um, while the, the Pluto is, is a very challenging energy in this dynamic, it is giving us an opportunity to surrender to the destruction of old structures, old beliefs, old dynamics, because there's a lot of Jupiter Mercury energy here, which again, I have to emphasize is naturally opposing itself on the wheel with Jupiter ruling Sagittarius and Mercury ruling Gemini. It's sort of this stretch between what is expected of me and that monkey mind, that hamster wheel of not actually being present, but being in those everyday activities and what's expected of me. And then stretching out of that to see that how I incorporate the larger picture of what I want into my everyday activities brings more ease and flow within those everyday activities. So I think by the end of October, we're really going to see, and through the beginning, I'm sorry, the end of September and through the beginning of October, we're really going to see this opportunity to review and to assess and to plan to strategize for how we want to move ourselves forward and also to see how previous challenges have actually served our own transformation. I, I don't really believe that a person can release something per se. I'm a human who once something has happened to me, it feels like it's been branded onto my heart and my soul, but I have learned how to transform that challenge into a tool that serves me moving forward. And that's what I think this, this um, aspect of Mercury being exact uh, Venus, Mercury retrograde, being exact Venus, moving forward up through Virgo, trining Pluto in Capricorn. 
we round out this retrograde with Mercury retrograde now moved into Virgo at 24 degrees in an almost exact conjunction. Well, it, I believe it does make an exact conjunction between these days to Neptune retrograde, 23, 24 degrees Pisces. The 24th degree is the Piscean degree. Pisces rules compassion. It rules spirituality. It also rules where we uh, are in some ways responsible for our own undoing. It rules places that are quiet, where we spend time alone. Um, it rules illusion. It rules like fog, Pisces. Neptune is watery. So I think what we're going to see here in this period of time is the potential of an illusion coming to the forefront for us to really re-examine and decide if this is serving us or if it's time to um, address any illusions or any false hopes that other people would change in order for us to feel more balanced within our lives. Um, the human oftentimes will look to their environment, to other people, and determine how um, happy they can be based on other people's opinion, other people's support, other people's cooperation. And at the same time, this really doesn't serve us because people are inherently flawed. Everybody has their own issues and is doing their best to create their own happiness. So when we are willing to stand in um this sort of energy of I'm going to own my happiness through my perception. I'm going to be brave in how I look at what my thoughts are and dig deep into are these thoughts I'm, I'm purporting that I'm thinking about every day. Are they really serving the experience I want to have moving forward? So let's look and see as we go through the signs right now to see where the houses are and where this is going to take place for you starting with aries rising the environment that this uh mercury retrograde is going to be in is in your seventh and sixth houses your seventh house is libra your sixth house is virgo so we're going to see mercury traversing through libra giving you an opportunity to really assess your um relationships. And I don't really think this is about looking at how the other people are showing up, but really assessing how you're feeling in your relationships. Because when we go back into Virgo, there's that dynamic of what I feel enslaved to. I always have found it interesting that the fifth house rules romance, where we meet somebody and we, we're in this beautiful sort of um, heightened sense of acceptance for everybody. Um, Wow, I'm being so challenged right now with that. I'm going to shut the door. Give me a second. Oh. Apologize. My neighbor and her never ending construction. Okay, back to Aries. Okay. So what I was saying is the seventh house is, you know, the first house of Aries rules the self. It rules me, who I am, how I'm asserting myself and what I think about myself. The seventh house is all about other people. It's a very social house. It's where we really feel how we land on other people. And oftentimes we feel a sense of obligation to the relationship or to the professional partnership. So this is when Mercury retrogrades back into Virgo, it's going to give you an opportunity to really assess where you have felt enslaved. So what I was starting to say before the saw went off was we start in the fifth house with romance. Okay. And everything is hunky dory. It's all exciting and playful and fun. And then as uh, time wears on and the, the partnership becomes, or the romance becomes more solidified, we'll really bring into that relationship, the sixth house activities, our health, our work, what we feel enslaved to and how we process things. So I think for Aries, this is going to give you an opportunity to really look at how you are working in cooperation with others. Do you want to stay in partnership with dynamics that make you feel obligated or dutiful? Are they serving your greatest happiness? Or is this an opportunity for you to 
reinvent yourself and not because you're taking action, but because you're assessing what's most important to you. Again, Jupiter is transiting your first house. Jupiter is about your beliefs. Jupiter is about expansion. Jupiter is about going into new areas, foreign ideas, foreign places, even that idea of, you know, master of education. So how am I willing to be the master of my own life by allowing myself to elevate to a place I've never been before? Because that's what it means when you go from one country to another. Usually I've never been there before. So this is an exciting time. I think on some level, it may be a little bit, um, you know, when we get to that part where Mercury is making the opposition to Neptune, uh, this may be a little bit challenging because here for Aries, we're going to see this in your 12th and 6th house, Neptune being your 12th house and Virgo being your 6th house. So there may be a little bit of frustration where you may have been putting yourself in a situation where you hoped other people would see you for your individuality, see you for your creativity and your passion and your initiative. And then you find out that it's not exactly working out that way. So initially it may be a little challenging and I want to offer you this as well, because um, while this video is focused on Mercury retrograde, Mars is going retrograde in Gemini. That's your ruling planet planet that rules team efforts, work efforts with teammates, workmates, schoolmates. So be mindful of feeling fiery a little bit because Mars is in its shadow period and will be before it goes uh, retrograde at the end of October. So there's a lot of energy here teeing things up for you, Aries, to see how your communications land on other people, how your thought process, uh, stokes your perception, which then stokes your um, presence as you show up and address something. And as you pull yourself above the situation and allow Jupiter to expand you in a way that says, I want to be effective in my communications versus just blasting them out. So it's, I think it's going to be a very powerful time. All right, let's go on to our Taurus rising moon, sun, and stelliums. This is going to be Libra is your sixth house. Virgo is your fifth house. This, this, all this activity is going to be happening in your house of work and health. And with um, this being Virgo, I'm kind of wanting to focus in on food and how you're treating your body. And if for some reason, um, we know Uranus is going through Taurus right now. Uranus can bring a little bit of anxiety and nervousness. Um, it's retrograde as well. So I would be really mindful of, of the dynamics of this retrograde, uh, having you eat unconsciously. I don't know why I want to put it that way, but sometimes, you know, when we're, um, sitting in front of the couch, watching TV, and we don't realize it and we'll go into the kitchen and get something and we'll just sort of munch along. And so for some reason, I want to uh, encourage tourists to look at how they are being in cooperation with their health. Are you treating yourself in a balanced way, Libra being your sixth house? Um, and what you think about yourself, your body, Venus, your ruling planet is going to be exact Mercury on the 26th or uh, till the beginning of October, making that trying to Pluto. So there's an opportunity for you to really revisit how you're treating your body, how you're thinking of yourself. Um, and your viability to make money. You may even find that some of your skills are enhanced by uh, any studies or reviews you do. And when I say skills, skills in, the, in regards to um, into sixth house matters, uh, applying, uh, if you, you could be a, a life coach, you could be a um, relationship coach, you could be a nutritional person, um, I feel like this might come into play, or you may be contemplating these dynamics or uh, even seeking out a mentor in these areas. And so doing your research right now and really establishing what your goals are. Again, th there's a big theme here with Jupiter and Mercury having huge conversations during this whole retrograde period. So your beliefs are really up for grabs. And as Mercury goes into your fifth house of Virgo, also the house of self uh, pleasure. 
I said that kind of funky, entertainment, hobbies, um, romance, children. It's going to give you an opportunity to really revisit how you are nurturing the self. Virgo, uh, in a mercurial way, it rules process and analysis. Whereas in Gemini, it rules media and persuasive conversation, to name a few things. So you may really be looking at how you're processing things, um, how you're mentally processing things. And there may be epiphanies that show up about old um, historic things that you took almost for granted and we're not aware of, not aware that they were imprinted upon you. And at this time, you may find yourself suddenly going, wow, I never knew that I was actually thinking that way or that I was basing some of my decisions on an imprint that is from you know 1989 or 1999 or 2009. So it's not about being judgy to yourself, but allowing uh, yourself to evolve past this Taurus being ruled by Venus is a fixed sign it rules my self-worth as as a result of what I've experienced within my family dynamic so this is where you may see that inadvertently some of the family dynamics you know our our, our geographical location our ethnicity they all come with a um, a story behind them and a way of being. And so I think for Taurus during this retrograde, it's going to give you an opportunity to decide if those ways of being are still applicable to what you want to experience, or if it's time to renovate them and to allow yourself to evolve beyond them if they're not working for you. Gemini, this is your ruling planet, and this is going to be going on in your fifth house of Libra and your fourth house of Virgo. So this is going to give you an opportunity to really look at how you, again, are allowing yourself to enjoy things. Fifth house rules pleasure. It rules entertainment. It rules my personal expression out in the world, my own personal creativity. It rules romance and children. And fourth house rules my family. So as we see Libra being your fifth house, are you in balance? Are you allowing yourself to, to enjoy things? You know... Mercury is the quickest uh, of all the planets. It, it, it zips around the zodiac very close to the sun at all times. And so if we think about the idea that the sun is how we project ourselves out into the world, Gemini could very much be identifying their value with how they're projecting themselves out into the world. And this is an opportunity for you to really look at how do I want to uh, project myself to myself? Um, have I been dutiful to others long enough or dutiful to my family, fourth house, fourth house matters. My fourth house also rules our country, our community in some respects, because Gemini rules my neighborhood, fourth house rules my country, where I live, the property I stand on, my homeland. So this is really an opportunity to have Gemini look at the dynamics of how am I serving the self that actually serves my family and my community? How am I allowing myself to evolve in my thoughts, in how, what I absorb myself in? I, I'm kind of, as a personal human, I'm super aware of the drug commercials on TV. They, they're they funny, I, I watch a pattern. And as I watch the pattern, it, it can sometimes irritate me because they use the soundtrack of my personal life um, to subliminally support these drugs. So when I'm in the market and I'm hearing, you know, uh, the the soundtrack of some of these commercials, it's it's aligning them. So my awareness of this is recalibrating the situation. So what I think I'm going with here is for Gemini to be aware of what's being subliminally put into your thought process, into what you experience in the media, um, what you experience in the way of what you read, what you watch on TV, and is it supporting uh, your evolution or is it in some way holding you in a pattern? And because Gemini is a, another sign like Libra, you know, it, it wants balance. It's a sign of the twins. They're both social signs, supporting other people um, and being involved with other people. So having Libra be your fifth house, how does your own personal uh, enjoyment really serve other people or serve 
a bigger dynamic. I think that's important. All right, let's go on to our cancers. This is going to be in your fourth house. Uh, Libra is your fourth house and Virgo is your third house. So here we're going to get to see cancer sort of really assess how you are allowing um, Libra's balance, Libra's cooperation, Libra's win-win. Um, because cancer can be such a nurturing sign that inadvertently it will give itself up. And this is never really um, supportive of the whole. So here, I, I think that Jupiter's um, aspects to Libra and the dynamics that it's creating over the course of this retrograde will give Cancer an opportunity to see that when you nurture yourself, when you look at the idea of Libra is a win-win, Libra creates a, a, um, a sense of compassion and harmony, and you're part of that picture. It's never about completely uh, focusing on another. Because when we go to the third house here and we see Virgo as your third house, this is going to be an opportunity for you to see how it, it's interesting because Gemini naturally rules the third house. And here we're seeing Virgo be your third house. So there's sort of this kind of um, feeling of a double mercurial imprint here. Um, how is your conversation? Because third house Gemini is a persuasive conversation serving your process, Virgo. Um, being your third house. So how can you, Cancer, allow yourself to give to yourself in a balanced way as you observe yourself and your beliefs and you, and, and you start to see that the beliefs you have imprint those that you nurture. So if you're nurturing others from a place of giving too much, you're not actually supporting the higher version of what you want to experience. So I think this is really what's going on for cancer um, during this retrograde period. And, and again, we're, we see Pluto making a strong aspect on the 26th of September all the way through till the beginning of October when Virgo and Mercury are exact at 26 degrees making a trine to Pluto. But we also see the late born cancers having Pluto making an opposition to your house. So you've been going through this excavation, through this um, real deep psychological um, review of how am I allowing my own needs and desires to truly be the nurturing and the, the uh, foundation to support those that I love, my family, my homeland. Because um, I, I really believe that children learn and people learn about us by the way we treat ourselves. And if we give too much of ourselves to others, then we, we're not serving. The, the larger picture. Okay, Leo, this retro, Mercury retrograde is going to be in your third and second house. So the third house is again, uh, the third represents what we think, what we speak. Um, we're seeing the third house here being Libra. So how are we in balance with what our desires are and what we want to experience out in the world? Where are our relationships serving us? And then we're going to go into the second house of uh, Virgo, which is the second house is naturally the second house of Taurus. So we're going to see, am I able to express my voice here within the Virgo dynamics? Am I speaking about my health in a way that serves me? Am I uh, looking at my self-worth? The This whole idea of the Virgo, I'm sorry, Libra Virgo retrograde to me is sort of this dynamic of being in cooperation, harmony, not just in partnership with others, but within myself, within how am I um, creating a win-win so that it supports my service work to others and my individual sense of health. Because when we overgive to others, we, we end up putting our mind in a place that's focused in on what we're getting back. We don't realize we're doing it, but every time we give, we're waiting to receive. So I think for 
my Leos right now, this is an opportunity to go into Libra, third house of community. How am I showing up for others? Um, how am I interacting with others? Am I allowing there to be balance? Am I um, diminishing myself? Am I being too uh, bold in some respects? And then going back into the second house of, of um, using my voice in a balanced way, using my voice in a way that represents the leadership that that leo does coming from my heart having the courage to come from my heart and this whole idea of assessing what do i really believe about myself what do i what am i willing to do to move into a foreign way of thinking that serves a bigger picture than i've i've yet to experience so much of at least from my personal opinion of the human's life journey comes from its perception, which is why astrology is based on your rising sign, because it, it is the perception with how you view the world. So Leo is a natural leader. It rules the Zodiac. It rules fun. It rules pleasure, personal pleasure, personal expression. So how do we take the idea of Mercury retrograding in the house of, of partnerships, Libra, professional and personal, and then back into your second house of Virgo, my self-worth, my family history, my, my uh, sense of enslavement, because there could be a release or an opportunity to have an epiphany of an old family story that served you to a certain point, but it's been taken too far down your life path and has started to um, actually anchor you to something versus giving you wings to fly. And Jupiter is offering you expansion beyond that. Hope that made sense. Let's go on to our Virgos. Libra is your 12th house. Wait, hold on. Virgo is your first house. No, Libra is your second house. Oh, I just messed myself up here. Hold on a second. Yeah. Okay, so Virgo. Libra is your second house and Virgo is your first house. Oh, for some reason, my mind just went mercury retrograde went a little funky so here we're going to see virgo when we look at the retrograde and i'm kind of going to sound a little funky here but right now mercury is in virgo and it's going into libra so as we oh i'm that's so wrong sorry mercury is currently in libra as it goes through libra which is your this first house Libra is your second house. Yes. So as it's in your second house, there is this opportunity for you to really sort of, I guess I want to offer it this way with Virgo naturally being the sign of dependability, practicality, process, analyzing things, um, coming to conclusions as a result of what you're analyzing. And then we look at Libra being your second house, are you actually giving yourself a fair shake? Are you putting yourself in your life um, at a 50% with what you do and how you are dutiful to others? Because when I look at this Mercury retrograde and I look at the dynamics of Mercury making so many aspects to Jupiter in Aries, in an opportunity to expand myself through a courageous um and independent and pioneering thought that as I serve myself, I actually serve others. As I allow myself to assess my family history, assess my self-worth, because you inadvertently may be attaching a sense of your self-worth to a part of you that's been enslaved to something that doesn't make you happy. And that could be involving your work dynamic, the partnerships within your work, the team uh, that you work with, um, any of those mercurial dynamics. And I think that what this could do is offer you an opportunity to strategize moving forward a new story. And I, I mean it in such a way that it isn't about talking to others, but rather imagining yourself coming into this idea that if Libra represents my second house and Venus naturally rules the second house, that as I use my voice and I think about things in a way that I win and the others win, then there's a potential that 
the universe can open up a space for that to actually come on the table. And then my opportunity is to walk through that door rather than going back onto the old story. There's, there's very much this feeling as Mercury hits 26 degrees when it's retrograding in Virgo and it becomes exact to Venus, 26 degrees, and then trines Pluto. This is very powerful for Virgo in general. There is a feeling of, um, well, it feels a little bit intense. It's not as rough as an opposition or a square, but Pluto is going to bring up something deep from within you that's going to make you recognize where you may have inadvertently been purporting habits that did not serve you, that enslaved you to something. And inadvertently, those around you may be depending upon you for that dynamic. And now it's time to liberate yourself from them. So um, I think this is super powerful for you. Libra, here we go. This is um, Libra rising. This is going to start in your first house and then traverse into your 12th house. We're going to see a lot of um, opportunities for Libra to see where you have inadvertently been holding yourself small. I feel as if when we think about Libra representing your first house and that Jupiter is um, right now transiting your seventh house, it feels as if there's this expansion in how you are perceiving your relationships and your value within relationships and potentially seeing that your happiness and your um individual desires, um, pleasures, hobbies, entertainments, the things you do for yourself that have nothing to do with your partnerships actually serve your partnerships. Jupiter represents expansion and individual, uh, I'm sorry, foreign thoughts, foreign people, foreign concepts, things you've never never done before. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to move yourself from one place to another where like they speak a foreign language, although that is applicable. It's to me, it's really about that higher perception that says, oh my goodness, you mean if I actually take care of me that I'm taking care of you, or if I allow myself to be a priority, that that inadvertently makes you a priority or gives you permission to make yourself a priority. Libra in its shadow side can be a little passive aggressive because it doesn't like to confront. So when we are looking at Mercury traversing your first house, how do you think? What do you speak? How are you teaching others about you by the way you show up? And the 12th house is Virgo. So there's this feeling of potentially feeling enslaved and never being seen for your uh, the work you do for others. The 12th house naturally rules the bedroom where we're alone. It's the last house before the soul goes back into the collective. It rules research and hospitals and places where we're in isolation. So having the house where your service, where your everyday activities of work and your health, um, being in the 12th house, you could not be paying attention to those things or people may not see them. And it's up to you to put them in a priority. The 12th house is the house of self undoing. So there's a part of us that's contributing karmically to our experience without being aware of it. So this is an opportunity for Libra to really allow this Mercury retrograde. And when it gets into Virgo and makes that trine to Pluto around the 26th of September to surrender to whatever Pluto is bubbling up from the toxic bowels of your life and letting it wash away when Mercury makes its opposition to Neptune. There's, there's a few dynamics this month that feel a little jarring and maybe slightly disappointing, but in the long run will really serve our greatest happiness. So let's go to Scorpio. Libra is your 12th house and Virgo is your 11th house. Scorpio, the 12th house is again, the house. Um, it's known as the house of self undoing. It's the house of, of escapism. It's also the house of, of dreams, of uh, sleep, of um, in many ways, meditation and ashrams. I feel like Scorpio, this is an opportunity for you to really examine uh, for yourself how you um, 
you know, it's funny to me because Scorpio is so intense naturally that it almost makes me feel like this retrograde may have you looking at the intensity of your thoughts and do you need to continue to be so intense and feel so isolated and feel so alone or is there an opportunity for you to open up as mercury retrogrades into virgo in your 11th house i feel as if this is a environment of sort of um scorpio is a fixed sign so as you feel alone, if you feel alone, if you feel isolated, if you feel as if nobody sees you, are you contributing to that dynamic because of your focused thought on it? I feel as if this particular Mercury retrograde would really serve you to go into meditation, to set intentions for what you want to experience within a larger group of people, how you want to be seen, how you want to allow yourself to be transformed. Because Mercury rules our mind and our mind rules our speech and our speech uh, indicates our beliefs and that creates our experience. And so I think for Scorpio, this whole month of October will give you an opportunity to really examine, especially as your ruling planet makes this trine to Venus and Mercury at the end of the month, it's going to tee things up for you to really get real. And I don't mean it in a, in a way that you are at fault, but rather if you are still believing that you are less than, if you're still contributing to the story that you don't win, then you are participating in that experience and you don't need to be perfect and believe 100% the opposite because that doesn't make sense. It's hard for the human to, to change so quickly, but as you allow for the journey, okay, Virgo rules process. So allow for the process of your mind to unravel you know, to write a new story, you'll feel so much satisfaction by the end of this period. All right, Sagittarius, Libra is your 11th house uh, and Virgo is your 10th house. A lot of this is going to have to do with how you're perceived in the outside world. Uh, you're going to be reviewing your networks, the people you, you interact with on the social media. Uh, are you aligned in beliefs with them? And also how you're seen in the public eye. Um, so a lot of your communications and social media may get scrutiny uh, or may be commented on. Uh, you may also feel a sense of wanting to maybe eliminate some of these apps or eliminate some of these groups that no longer serve you. Jupiter, again, is rules expansion. It rules wealth. It rules um, broad thought, foreign thought foreign people, foreign dynamics. So as it is retrograde in Aries and is making an aspect to Mercury so many times throughout this retrograde, there could be the potential that you have new ideas about things and you either want to move into new arenas and expand upon them, or maybe you want to change some of them altogether. Um, Virgo rules, uh, again, a work, a work dynamic, a, a dependability, a practicality, a a process. And I think you may be deciding if you still want to be involved in those processes, or if you want to expand upon those processes. This feels very much as your ruling planet Jupiter is making aspects. It feels as if you have a real opportunity to go where you've never been before and to feel a passion about it and not about how it's going to play out, but the inspiration of how you will be perceived within this expansive and public arena. Um, I feel as if Sagittarius kind of gets to sit in that um teach as people observe and experience you. I don't think this is where Jupiter is actually talking so much. I feel like because of the retrograde, this is really reviewing that belief system, that speech, and then how speech uh, ref is reflected within your actions. And so I think that this is going to be a real opportunity for you to grow and grow through um 
I guess I want to put it this way. I feel like the universe will give you signs and omens that things are starting to align. I don't know if they will be completely lined up for you to take action on until the retrograde is over. So um, you might want to give yourself some time there and not um, undermine your results by um, expecting things to happen uh, while Mercury's retrograde. All right, Capricorn. Libra is your 10th house and Virgo is your ninth house. We are going to see a real opportunity for you to implement the Plutonian dynamics that have been going on um, for a long time right now. You have Capricorn, um, sorry, you have Pluto traversing your first house. And as you um, walk through uh, even deeper levels of looking at how your mind has created your experience and assessing if those um, parameters, if what you have built now in the way of, of old structures, authority, government, how um, the people in your lives, you know, the 10th house is your career, the ninth house is your beliefs, it's also higher education, how people have influenced you, and if their influence is still serving the um, the vision of what you have for your future. I have really felt like Capricorn was going through this dynamic, you know, it's not necessarily considered a very emotional sign, but yet at the same time, Capricorn rewards as one implements the experiences they have and turns that maturity into wisdom, turns those experiences into something that allows um, you to build upon it in the material world. And here we're looking at your mind. We're looking at what your speech is, what, your, what you read, what you think. And I think there's going to be a discernment that starts happening that allows you to transform from the cranky old goat into the baby goat that's excited and a little bit more um, inspired by the potentials of your ninth house being Virgo and working in an arena that's more aligned to the evolved version of you. I, I think Le uh, Capricorn is a, is a strong leadership sign and, and in such as it allows itself to evolve past what is expected of it, what is dutiful. This is the shadow side of Capricorn, purporting behaviors and staying in dynamics that don't make you happy, that actually erode your health. That, And this would be Virgo, your ninth house. So as you start to see that you're allowing yourself to discern where you want to put your attention, where you want to put your mind, what you actually want to speak of to others. You will start to um, see how your fears are actually the seedling, the impetus for your empowerment. I am 100% convinced that there is not a human on earth that cannot feel the the exhilaration of their passion without walking through a journey of fear. It could be a city block long. It could be a mile long. It could be a hundred mile long journey, depending upon the individual, but it will always start with the um, platform of inspiration and then this journey of fear before accomplishment. So Capricorn, I think this is a super exciting dynamic for you to be able to walk through um, this, this, revisiting and renovation of how you are perceived in the public eye and your own personal beliefs about letting go of some of your fears in a negative way and starting to allow them to represent false evidence appearing real. All right, let's go on to Aquarius. Uh, Libra is your ninth house and Virgo is your eighth house. The ninth house, again, represents foreign ideas, foreign places, higher education. It's naturally ruled by Jupiter. And the eighth house rules um, commingling of other people's money. It rules inheritances and taxes by nature. It rules sex. It rules the occult. It rules uh, the deep levels of the psyche where our toxic uh, experiences live. So here we have an opportunity to see Aquarius individualize themselves, to really look at Mercury, which is the lower octave of Uranus, your ruling planet. And as Mercury moves into Libra, come into cooperation with a new version of your beliefs to allow yourself to expand beyond them and to really decide whether, you know, Aquarius sometimes will feel alien or feel isolated, feel, uh, uh, 
different from everyone else. And in doing so, it will disconnect emotionally. And this is giving you an opportunity to really decide if Libra, your ninth house, is is aligned to your individuality? Do I really need to sort of emotionally disconnect or can I create partnerships that allow for my individual expression and my uniqueness, my genius, um, my exploration? Because that's where the beauty of the Virgo being your eighth house allows for full transformation from the enslavement of expectation, the, ex the enslavement of, of how others perceive what you should or could be doing for them because again the eighth house is very much a house of intimacy and commingling of funds of my body of my bodily fluids um okay and final sign pisces uh, this is going to be in your eighth house and your seventh house respectively the eighth house again is a house of transformation as represented by libra an opportunity to purport balance to purport harmony to actually look at where you've been giving up your power pisces is a very mutable sign it represents compassion and libra represents harmony so you know your eighth house is riddled with with ideals with the the best part of what this life experience could be and now i think is an opportunity to claim it and i think you're going to see that very strongly when we get to the end of this retrograde when mercury in virgo is opposing pisces neptune's ruling planet um Pisces ruling planet Neptune retrograde in Pisces, and it creates this opposition. So there could be a potential for you to feel a little disappointed. There's the potential that there's a little bit of a, a clearing of a fog, um, a removing of an illusion, and a, and a moment where you may want to escape it all. Um, but at the same time, it will serve a greater purpose for you. Because as you allow for this um, illusion to be broken, to allow yourself to transform beyond it. It will serve your partnerships and serve your health and serve your sense of self much better. You know, I think a little bit of the challenge with Pisces is when you're over giving, um, you won't, you won't talk about it. You won't really speak of it, Mercury. And so it, it sends you into this place in your mind that could have inadvertently erode your health or create a lot of stress for you. So I think this is an opportunity to, again, take the dynamics of Libra, uh, starting in your eighth house, transforming how you view your partnerships and seeing that your individual pleasure, your individual um, unique expression, you're taking the higher vibrations of the Neptune experience, you know, creating beautiful stories and beautiful pictures and beautiful music and allowing your unique expression to serve your partnerships, to serve um, the balance there where you feel empowered within your seventh house dynamic. Um, you know, when I think about Virgo uh, and, and Pisces being in opposition naturally in, under the wheel or in the wheel, Virgo could be a little dominant there. Uh, the mercurial dynamic could overrule the mind, overrule the emotional dynamic. And that is an old story that as we move into the age of Aquarius is being written, rewritten. And as we'll start to see character and, um, and uh, how we show up for humanity being the, um, the real measure of a man versus, or woman for that purpose, versus our material what we've amassed materially. So I think this Mercury retrograde is super powerful and super, um, it's setting a new foundation where other retrogrades, um, while they're always powerful, this one feels like um, it is lining up with, with other retrogrades in the wheel right now. And I didn't talk about Uranus. I'm going to do a Mars video, the Mars retrograde. All these things are coming up at the end of 2022 and taking us into 2023 so that we can really start to be conscious co-creators and live a life that is so much more exciting and powerful. And while the rest of the world may appear to be very challenged, we will represent those who understand that thoughts are things and our focused thoughts 
thought does not have to be perfect, but rather just an awareness will bring us into cooperation and alignment. And every day that we are aware, we will become more and more aligned and we will become what appears to be magical to other people. And in that way, we will truly serve humanity and those that we love around us, including our communities and those that experience us throughout the various media platforms. So I hope you found this video um, uh, helpful. Please like, please subscribe, please share the video. I am available for individual readings, both astrology and intuitive readings. If you'd like to, my information is below. Please reach out to me and I will be back soon very soon actually with our full moon in Pisces video, which is happening the day after the beginning of this retrograde on September 10th. So thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Peace out everybody. <laughs>